Aloha, everyone. Welcome to our Mentory or Aloha Friday podcast. Today, my name is Leigh Cummings. I'm your host for today. We're, uh, we have a special show for you, and we'll feature another one of our wonderful alumni. But before we introduce her, I'd like to just um, give you a few announcements before we get started. First of all, um, this coming Monday, we have our a Mentoring Monday podcast with Lonnie Pinpin from Microsoft. Please join us for that. We have our student host that will be um, talking to her and talking about her career within Microsoft. Lonnie actually went to school during my time. She's been at Microsoft for many years, so lots to learn from her. Grateful for her time there. And then this uh, next Friday, we've invited our Vice President of Student Life, Kala Kao, to join us on our Mentoring Monday podcast. He'll be with uh, his wife and brother and sister Kao will be talking about um, their roles here at BYU Hawaii. We're very blessed to have them here. And that'll be on June 17th. Okay, and I want to give one more announcement before we start. In November, we have a uh, special reunion planned with our Hawaii chapter, November 4th through the 6th. We hope those of you from Hawaii and even beyond uh, from the mainland that would like to join us will come to this. We'll be on campus for this uh, special reunion, and um, it's planned around the Food Fest, which is on November the 5th. So you're not going to want to miss that one. It's going to be lots of fun. Okay, so thank you. Those are our announcements. Um, every week, we really try to bring some alumni to share their BYU Hawaii journey with you. Uh, today, we've invited our very own um, alumna, Nikki Holbrook, who was a Miss Hawaii 2019 and 2020. She actually served two years as Miss Hawaii while she was a student at BYU Hawaii. So I'm pretty amazed at this young lady. She's doing some amazing things. And she even placed top 10 in the Miss Hawaii, pa Miss America pageant, excuse me. Um, but I'm gonna have her share more of her story along those lines. But as a BYU Hawaii student, she graduated with a business management, management and marketing degree with minors in Pacific Island studies in health and human performance. Today, she's the, ho the current host and producer for KITV's new lifestyle show called Island Life. You're gonna hear more about that too. So excited to share all these amazing things that Nikki is doing. So I'd like to bring her on at this time, Nikki Holbrook. Aloha, Nikki. Aloha, thank you for having me. Oh, it's great having you. You look like you're still a student, BYU Hawaii. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. I did graduate not too long ago, so. <laughs> yeah, so you are uh, what was it 2020, 21? You graduated? So I graduated just this past December. Oh um, my so gosh. I'm a, fresh, yeah. I'm a fresh alumni. <laughs> That's amazing. So 2021. And then uh, during that time that you were here as a student, you were also busy doing other things like running for pageants and helping Miss Hawaii. You know, how'd you do all that? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I, I think back and I'm like, how did I do that? I don't know. <laughs> Because it, it, honestly, my time at BYU Hawaii feels like it went by so fast. I think after I graduated, I almost felt like I wish I had more time because it just it flew by. Um, and I was there, you know, all four years. But I had definitely had to learn how to plan and prioritize my schedule and and still try to make the most of what I was doing at BYU Hawaii, but also, you know, be involved with other activities, too. Well, just amazing. I can't imagine what your schedule looked like, you know. I, when when you're when you're announced as Miss Hawaii and a student at BYU Hawaii, I was just like, wow, who is this young lady? We need to meet her, you know. And I never really got to meet you, but I did see that you had we had scheduled like an MBTI appointment together, and so I was hoping that I could have met you before you left. But anyway, this is a better better uh, meeting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. I actually remember when I was getting close to graduate, I was like. I have no idea what I'm going to do after. And so I did go to career services and I actually got a lot of help. <laughs> so oh, thank you great. for your department oh. for helping me out. But I definitely so, use that resource. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, so good. Anyway, well, we want to hear a little bit about your journey to BYU Hawaii and beyond and what what's happened in that short amount of time that you've been, you know, after graduation and now 
as a, um, you know, working in television. Um, you know, there's, there's so many, um, when, I, when we thought about doing this podcast, I thought about a few people, as I mentioned to you in the tech run, you know, I thought about my aunt, Elizabeth Lindsay, who's also Miss Hawaii and an alumna of BYU Hawaii. And I thought about our other beauty queens that we've had, like Miss Nahopono and um, others that um, we've had over the years. So anyway, today we're representing all of those beautiful people and um, inside and out that have uh, represented our campus so well. Um, you um, will highlight today, but do you have anything else you want to add to that introduction? Um, I think those are the main points, honestly. Um, I came here and followed in the footsteps of my older siblings. I uh, came out here and I, I can talk about it more in a little bit, but I just love my experience here and um, everything that I was able to get involved with and where I was able to work and all these things and kind of all the different experiences I had that led me to Miss Hawaii and then also to what I'm doing now. So Okay. So many things that I think have kind of paved the way for what I'm doing today. Wonderful. Well, I'm excited to get to know your journey a little bit more. I know you've prepared some pictures for us. So um, we've, we've ha we have some people that are joining us online. And if you have questions, guests, please go ahead and uh, leave us some questions below for Nikki. And we'll try to take those throughout this hour with her. Okay. So Nikki, we have some slides here that we'd like to kind of go through and let you tell us a little bit about um, some of these people that you're, we're looking at right now. This looks like your family. Yes, this is my family. So um, on the left in front of the temple, that is my family. This is for my sister's wedding. Um, so she got married out here. And so we have my older brother, my brother-in-law, my sister, and my parents. Um, oh. Love them so much. Um, it was super fun when all three of me, my brother and my sister were all living out here at the same time. Um, and kind of having family out here was just really comforting while I was you know, here at college. Um, my dad is actually originally from Hawaii. And so oh, growing wow. up, we would always come to Hawaii. I'm originally from California, but we would always come to Hawaii to visit his family. And we would stay for weeks at a time. And you know, it was something where I was from California, but I always just felt at home in Hawaii, especially when I was able to connect with my Hawaiian culture and, and with our family. Um, and so I knew when I was applying for college that I wanted to go to BYU Hawaii and have that experience. Um, mm -hmm. And so just so grateful for that. But that is my family. Um, we're, a, we're a fun bunch, I think, crazy bunch. <laughs> but, but we have a lot of fun. And um Having my two older siblings is really good examples for me. I'm just so grateful for them. So, okay. So I know, I, I know, I know the young man in the um, that your sister married, uh, Kavika. He's actually yes. a cousin of mine. Yeah. Oh, really? That's yes. awesome. <laughs> oh, I know. World. I love their. Family. Oh, yeah. Small world. I'm like, we all we always know someone. You know, someone's connected to somebody. So. Yes. Yeah, yes. He, he's a part of our family too now. Oh, wonderful, handsome, and there's a handsome guy that you're with on the other side of there the. Is. <laughs> yes, so the second picture, um, this is my fiance. I get to call him fiance now, which is so exciting. Um, his name is Cameron Ho Ching. His parents actually spoke a couple weeks ago. They did a podcast on here, which was yes. awesome. Yes, um, yes. But yeah, so we got engaged at the end of March. Um, we'll be getting married this summer. Oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's been an exciting time. And um, I don't know, our the way our relationship kind of fell into place was just so unexpected and so random. But um, I wouldn't have it any other way. And I'm just so grateful for him and super excited for what's next for us. Yeah. Like your boy. I remember him like growing up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of which, um, let's see. I think we've asked a few of your family members to come on. And surprise you so let's see if we can bring them. <laughs> i'm so curious your sister and hey! oh my gosh, <laughs> let's see if we can go oh, down this is awesome. there we go <laughs> oh, oh, i can't get your mom and dad on i think it's not connected but we did ask that's them okay. to join us oh but Jordan, Kavika, Kavika, your mustache. Your yeah. mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Unstoppable. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. Right. Plus married life, guys. Awesome. Yes. It's yeah. possible. Love you, have any, you have any advice for these guys? Yeah. <laughs> marriage is not 50 50 it's 100 100 <laughs> yeah that's, that is that's my right yeah. yeah that's good put put yeah. the lord first in everything you do that uh, all right that's so awesome <laughs> <laughs> taking notes thank you <laughs> no, that, seeing, seeing your sister and kavika too you know they are also alumna alumni of the way that's true yes, right we are. Yes. You guys want to share anything about your experience? BYU Hawaii. It was a great time. I mean, <laughs> it was just, honestly, I think my favorite thing was just getting to make friends from all over the world mm -hmm. uh, and just getting to experience different cultures and like broaden my horizons. And yeah, there's really no place like BYU Hawaii, like the diversity, you can't get that anywhere else. So yes, yes. Part, yeah. but. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I guess for me, looking on your screen, Auntie, I can see the va in, in the background. Yeah. One of the greatest experiences I had was to be a part of uh, the crew of Iosepa. Oh, and yeah. Sail with them. And, and that was one of the greatest experiences I had. And in, in, in Iosepa being a, a missionary, uh, a vehicle to be able to serve other people. And, and that's what. BYU Hawaii is about is and to, to learn and go forth to serve, right? And so That's I just cool. love that. And it taught me about navigation, not only about not only on, on the ocean, but to navigate my life and put my sights on, on the horizon, have a vision for my life and set my goals and do everything I can to get there. So I'm wow. so glad for the experience. Awesome. That's awesome. You still Olalo Hawaii? Olalo Hawaii, Mono Olalo Hawaii. Oh, my Kai. <laughs> oh, right on, right on. Cameron, you're sitting there patiently. I know you've been in school, right? You have, you just had finals, I hear, yesterday. Yeah, still in finals, uh, almost done. So I'm looking at the horizon too. Hopefully it's close. Uh, <laughs> so close for so far, but uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been keeping us very busy um, and me very busy, but it's a good busy, so yeah yeah i i didn't get to go to byuh unfortunately but uh i always tell nikki like well it'd be cool to to see what it'd be like if i went to byuh yeah. um but you know it's okay it's all good <laughs> i'm here now so yeah you're you're, you're doing <laughs> i grew up around things. it yeah you yeah. grew up around it you're doing some so, good things you want to be a doctor right yeah that's the plan so that's hopefully cool. in the Exciting. future yeah yeah it's been it's been really fun so oh so exciting well we we definitely are so grateful that you guys joined us this morning i mean this afternoon because um uh, nikki didn't know anything about this <laughs> and so i was trying <laughs> to convince her to have the pictures at the end so we could save you for the end but um it was good to have you at the beginning as well and to see you guys see all of you mom and dad i think the service is bad so we can't get them i think they were okay i'm sure they're listening they're yes, listening, I'm sure. They're hearing spirit. Yeah. There yes. you go. <laughs> yes. Well, well, thank you for everyone. Of course, what a miss it. Love it. it. <laughs> yes. Thank you, all. thank you, Cameron, for. Love you. There we go. I see. I see, mom and dad now. Let me just bring them oh. our class. Yeah. Hey. Let's go. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello, mom and dad. It's <laughs> Oh, I can't oh, hear I can't her. Hear. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> They're, glowing. They're, glowing. They're glowing. They're glowing. Oh. That's okay. That's okay. That's awesome. Well, thank you. I think they also had their um their um the volume on, so I was we saw that heard the echo a little bit, but. Nikki, and I heard that you have a really tight-knit family. It's good to see all of them and um, also to see Cameron and uh, to have you folks join us for this podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Nikki, you want to say anything to your family? Um, I just love you guys so much. It's so fun seeing you all in one place. <laughs> I miss you all. So excited to for us to all be together very soon. <laughs> yes, miss you too. Yes. You're awesome. 
<laughs> okay, so when's the big day? Can we announce it on this podcast? <laughs> it is in August. <laughs> All right, it's coming up. You yeah, it comes up. up. Lots of planning. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, yeah. Good to see mom and dad. Um, now tell us mom and dad's names, Nikki. Chris and Scott Holbrook. Okay, great. And dad is from Hawaii, you said? Yes. Which part of Hawaii? Um, he's originally from Aiea. Oh, right on. Mm -hmm. Aiea. So, but I think he went to kindergarten in Kahuku. So I think he also reps that too. No way. No way. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Wow. He did. I gotta throw up the signs. Yeah, we, we got the stamp of approval. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, mean, I believe, I believe it. <laughs> okay, oh, that's so good. Well, mahalo family for joining us on this uh, on our podcast today. We hang it, hang in there, because um, maybe towards the end we can have a group photo. Okay. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> All right. Love you. See you later. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. Aloha. Okay. Aloha. Oh, awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, nice seeing everybody. I know. Oh, I love it. <laughs> what a good looking family there. <laughs> oh. so awesome. Okay. So you have this slide here also. This is talking about your um, when you first came to BYU Hawaii, right? Yes, it is. Um, so the picture on the left, that's when I had just found out that this is when I was a senior in high school. Um, so I had just found out I had gotten into BYU Hawaii and I was so excited. Um, I think it was like one of those places where I knew deep down that's where I wanted to go, but I didn't know if it would work out that way. Um, I so I applied to a lot of different schools and, um, you know, I had some acceptances, I had some denies. And so I was like, Okay, I hope I get in because this was BYU Hawaii was actually the last school that I heard from. So I was just oh, waiting. <laughs> I was patiently <laughs> waiting. Um, but yeah, so I, I got accepted. And the picture on the right um, was from I think it was my second my second semester of my freshman year. And mm -hmm. um, this is PJ Rogers. Probably many many people are familiar with him. Yeah, um, good guy. And, and the, he's awesome. I, I love PJ. He's just become a really good mentor and also friend. Um, yes to me but i chose this picture because um to me it really just represents what byu hawaii is all about um when i came in as a freshman i didn't know any of the professors obviously i didn't know people um, i didn't have any friends from back home that came to byu hawaii and so i was going into this new experience um but it was so cool because my sister who you guys just met um, she served her mission in south korea and oh, yeah. PJ had served his mission in South Korea and has so many ties to Korea. And um, they actually met while she was on her mission and took a picture together. And so when I found out he was my professor, I thought it was so cool because we kind of had this connection with Korea and with my sister. Um, and it was just super neat to me to feel like I had some connection um, that I knew somebody in this new place that I was at. And um, it was so fun because in that business class that I had with him, I remember like it was the first or second day. He was like, okay, I'm letting you know now my my office door is always open. If you ever have questions about assignments or you need you know, life advice or career advice, anything, come to my office and, and I can talk and, and I can guide you. And I remember just feeling like, okay, I, I feel like I should talk to him. I have no idea. I don't really know him very well, but I feel like I should talk to him and just introduce myself. Yeah. That's what I did. And that became a reoccurring thing. I would stop by his office and, you know, he would give me advice um, about networking or about different, you know, careers I was looking at. And mm -hmm. he really just became a great, great mentor. And that really encouraged me to get to know my other professors and connect with them because they have so much knowledge um, and I feel like I learned so much inside the classroom but I also learned so much outside of the classroom just through their mentorship um, and their guidance so that yeah. that picture is just very special to me because I was a new freshman and um, <laughs> as you can see I'm like <laughs> you know but it was just it was just a really awesome experience for me and kind of paved the way for how I lived out my BYU Hawaii experience. Good. I'm so glad that you had that connection with PJ. Just an awesome guy. 
you know, I, I was going to ask him to surprise you today too, but he was helping with the funeral this morning. <laughs> so busy. I, sometimes I'm like, I don't even know how you have to any time. He's a, he's a go, go, go person. So I always so, respect yeah. him for that. <laughs> yeah. He's in Utah too. So one of, one of his mentors had just passed away, but, and a former um, BYU Hawaii administrator. So yeah. Um, but yeah, it's so important to have a mentor, you know, we do that uh, podcast Mentoring Monday every week with students, and it's just been so great. And our alumni are so um, willing to share their time, you know, time and talents with our students to help them. Yeah. Well, great. Thanks for sharing that picture. Okay. Oh, look at this. Looks like culture night, huh? Yes, we got a nice spread of many things. <laughs> uh, oh, where to start? Um, so I, these pictures um, are kind of from different years um, throughout my time at BYU Hawaii. Um, and when I, before I came to BYU Hawaii, I always heard, you know, I heard my older siblings, you know, they'd come home for Christmas and they would talk about fun things that they got to do. And of course, you know, going to the beach and hikes, that's all super fun. And that's, you know, the beautiful things about Hawaii. But I always was just so fascinated about the different experiences they had with friends that they met from different countries, um, yeah. from, you know, being able to do culture night and learn about cultures that maybe, you know, they had, they had no knowledge about before um, or, you know, working at the Polynesian Cultural Center and, and how much they got to learn more about our Hawaiian culture. And that was just so amazing to me. Cause I was like, where, where, what place can you go to and have those types of experiences? Um, right. And so when I came to BYU Hawaii, um, this picture on the top left, um, this is one of my best friends, Kaylee. And she, luckily she was actually my roommate. So I got blessed to have my first roommate become my best friend, <laughs> um, which, yeah, it was just so awesome. And um, we made a goal for ourselves that we would try really hard to meet a new person every day um, mm. when we were at the cafe. So if we went to the cafeteria, we would sit by somebody that we had never met before and just start talking to them. So good. And it was just so fun because um, we just ended up meeting people from all over the world and learning about other people's cultures and their backstories and where they came from. Um, and that's also why there's that picture at the bottom. Um, you know, in the cafeteria, we met two friends, Kiwi and Toshi, who are from Japan. And they became friends. You know, we all became friends throughout my whole BYU Hawaii experience and learned so much from them. Um, the top right is from the Polynesian dance and performance class. Okay. Uh, and that was just another, you know, opportunity of wanting to learn more about other cultures and, and have that experience. And um, I just, I don't know. I think I just love that so much about BYU Hawaii is you're, you're put in a place where there's people from all over the world who have unique experiences and stories and you can learn so much just by interacting with them, just by yeah. having conversations with them. And um, so, yeah, these, these pictures are just, they warm my heart because it just really sums up kind of that, the experience that I had with the different people I've met. I love what you said about just going to sit by someone new every day. Um, I teach this uh, careers class um, every week, and one of um, one of our alumni, I mentioned her to you, a CCH alumni, her name is uh, Yui Sai Khan. She, um, she gives that advice on networking. She says, you know, uh, don't stick with your own crowd. Go out and meet other people. Yeah, ha that happens so often where we just feel comfortable with our own people, you know, our own culture. Our own, that we could speak our own language. But yet, when you're here in this kind of a setting at BYU Hawaii, it's just a great opportunity to get to know others. Yeah, it's and so network. True. Yeah, It's true, honestly. And that was one of the things that PJ always um, would give us advice on. He would say, you know, you're in a place where there's over 70 countries represented. You know, when are you ever going to be in a place where you can work together, communicate with people from all over the world who share similar values and beliefs? Um, that doesn't happen very often and you have four years to do it if you yes. know not less and so you know why not take the opportunity to talk to the person next to you in your class and 
connect with them and, and learn from them. And um, so, yeah, I'm just very grateful that for that advice and um, for all the people I've been able to meet. Great advice. Great advice. So did you ever dance in the culture night, Nikki? I did. I did. I, um, my freshman year, I'm trying to remember, I did Tahiti, Aotearoa, and wow. I'm trying to remember what else. And then I also, um, I worked at the PCC at the, when uh, the canoe show was still going on, when Huki. Yes. Was, okay. Uh, so that was super fun for me just to kind of learn, learn oh, yeah. and better and perform in a really cool place. Super fun. Yeah. I know. I, we have to, I hope they bring the, the show back. I think it's, we still don't have the canoe show right now. Yeah. I, I don't think so. Soon. Yeah. Maybe you'll have to come back and help dance. <laughs> well, well, I don't, I'm probably very rusty, but. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So you started your um, run for Miss Hawaii in uh, what year was that? Um, well, I started competing um, mm -hmm. in the Miss America organization many years before. Um, so yeah. I didn't win Miss Wife. I, I'm trying to think how long I was actually competing for, but I was competing for a few years before um, in California. But when I you know, was getting ready, I was like, if I was to win a state title, I really want to be a Miss Hawaii just because I feel like I, you know, the cultural connection and I just felt like that's what felt like the place that I wanted to represent and that represented me. Um, and so the, the year I won was in 2019, um, like June, I think June of 2019. And uh, then like you had mentioned before, because of COVID, um, they asked if I would serve another year, uh, which has never happened before. And I definitely was not expecting that. Um, <laughs> I did serve till, or also in 2020 also. So. Okay, right. And we have a clip, right, from your pageant. Yes, like we do, we do. Okay. Go ahead and bring that up. First runner up is Miss Kaka'ako, Makana Williams. Your new Miss Hawaii 2019. Miss Central Oahu, Nikki Kehaulani Holbrook. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can oh, see cool. my, my ugly cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. So your talent was playing the piano, right? Yes, yes. So um, I performed a classical piano piece. Um, I started playing when I was four and oh. just kind of, I'm grateful my parents um, kept me in piano. <laughs> they kind of forced me like, no, you need to keep taking lessons. And then it got to a point where I, I really did fall in love with it. But um, yeah, it, was, it really was an amazing experience to be able to share that on the Miss Hawaii stage and also the Miss America stage. And, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of practice and a lot of hard work, but it was, it's really incredible when you can do that. So, yeah. Now, was it your piano teacher that got you started in pageants? Is that what I heard? Yes, it was. Um, so, I guess a little bit of the backstory of how I I got into the Miss America organization. Um, so, I growing up, I was a competitive soccer player, oh. and that was like my life dream. Is I just I wanted to play in college really badly, and I wanted to, um, you know, eventually play professionally on, you know, the women's national team and so i had i had really high goals for that and i was working really really hard in my youth to hopefully get there um and i ended up having a knee injury i i ended up dislocating my knee mm -hmm. um and then that kind of turned into this reoccurring injury um and then i ended up having to have surgery and um so it was, it was a really hard time um just because you know i was it was keeping me from getting to my goal that i wanted um and so I, it kind of came to the point where I had to decide that I couldn't do soccer anymore just for the health of my knee and for, you know, just keeping my, my body safe. Um, but I was taking piano lessons at the time and um, my piano teacher randomly brought up the Miss America organization because she was a former Miss Oklahoma. Uh -huh. and, you know, and I didn't even know. I was like, oh, you were? That's cool. You know, I didn't know that. But 
um, it just kind of randomly came up in conversation and she knew that I kind of lost my hobby of playing soccer. And so she was like, you know, this is the perfect time. You should try something new and, and just go for it. And I was very hesitant. <laughs> I was like, that is not my thing at all. I wear cleats, not shin guards and <laughs> I mean, not, you know, heels yeah. and all that. But, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just decided that I would try it because I had nothing to lose. It was something just to try. And um, I competed for the first time and I ended up falling in love with it. And um, I competed for years after that. And mm -hmm. it was because of her kind of giving me that nudge to try something new, um, something out of my comfort zone that really opened many doors that I never would have expected. Um, mm -hmm. Even though in my head it wasn't, you know, what I originally was planning, I think it was better. It turned out to be better than what I could have imagined. So um, grateful for her and um, for her nudge <laughs> to get me to do that. That's cool. Is that where you got your title for your for today's um, podcast was Seize the Day? Is that where, kind of where it came from? Yeah, um, I, I chose Seize the Day um, or Carpe Diem, however you want to you know, say it, um, just because I feel like in my life there's been um, many of the, the cool experiences or opportunities that have opened for me um, were times that I really had to step out of my comfort zone and just trust in the Lord and also just trust in myself. And um, I also feel like kind of making the most of any experience that you have. Um, and, you know, whether it's was my time at BYU Hawaii or, you know, seizing the day to just try this new thing. Um, I don't know. I really just feel like it was times that I really made the most with the people that were around me and, and just kind of taking the opportunity to do something new. That's when the best experiences have happened. Yes, that's wonderful. Yeah, you you had your your mindset on something, and then Heavenly Father had a different plan for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, and it's amazing to see what you've done already. You know how um, successful you've been so far, and even using your platform. Which can you talk a little bit about that? What your platform um, was for Miss Hawaii? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, when I was competing in the Miss America organization, they you know every title holder has a a platform or cause that they're passionate about. And so mine was SNAP, which stands for Service Nurtures All People. Um, yeah, SNAP. And I would always do that. I would say SNAP. And I would, that was like my, my tagline was I would always SNAP. Um, but the reason I chose that was because um, I've seen in my life how, you know, especially when I had my knee injury and was going through some difficult times, that when I stopped focusing on myself and I started focusing on other people. Um, it really helped me get through that trial and it helped me overcome it. Um, and so what I, the purpose of SNAP was to educate youth about service, you know, show them how you can serve, little ways that you can get involved, um, but also teach them the benefits of service. Um, Cause I think a lot of times, you know, when we go through a difficult time or um, we're kind of feeling bad for ourselves, it's really easy to focus on ourselves and not necessarily in a bad way, but, you know, right. we're focusing on the, the things that are happening towards us. But when we kind of turn our attention to other people, we're yeah. able to ease that burden and find joy and, you know, gain self-confidence and understand our self-worth. Um, and so that was something that I really wanted to educate youth about. Um, and it was just really, really neat being able to go to schools and work with other organizations and bring service projects to them and just see how excited kids got. You know, when they were tying a blanket for someone, for a child in the hospital that was their same age and seeing them be able to sympathize with that and just be excited that they could help them. Um, mm -hmm. So seeing that, um, that that was probably, you know, I, I just love being able to do that as Miss Hawaii and, and spread that message and um, just my passion about it. So I love that. Um, as you were, I, when I watched a previous podcast that you had done and you talked about this, you know, it reminded me of, as members of the church, we're all kind of, we do a lot of service, you know, starting when we're little and when we're in uh, young women's and young men, there's all kinds of service activities that we're doing. You know, it just reminded me of all those things and how you brought it, you know, to um, here, you know, and teaching other youth about that. Really yeah, good. And I, I think that's, that's something I'm so grateful about the church is that we are, constantly given opportunities to serve others, whether that's through a calling or, you know, the activities you do as a youth or just serve projects. We have those opportunities at our fingertips so easily. 
Yes. Um, and so that was something that was neat for me was to be able to go to these places where, you know, some of these kids never had opportunities to serve or didn't even think that that what they were doing was service and to kind of show them, you know, ways that they could do it in their own homes or with their classmates um, and, and try to spread that message to them that, you know, they could serve also. Love that. Great, great project. Cool. I also saw a question pop up, which I thought was a really, really interesting question that kind of had yes. to do with what we were talking about. Let me see. Okay. Okay. I don't want to read it. It was, I think it was, let's see. Or maybe I can hear it. Um, do you see it? Oh, yes, I do. I just thought it was really interesting. Um, so the question is, in an environment such as a world pageant where worldly values are not consistent with your own, what is it like to be bold and stand up for what you believe? That's a really good question. That's like a on stage question that I'd have to answer at Miss America <laughs> or something, like pull out of the hat and read a question. Um, oh, cool. I love that question. Um, yeah, so just to answer that question, I think, you know, that was something, and even with what I'm doing right now, um, but when I was Miss Hawaii, there were a lot of times where, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about the pageant world or about what I was doing. And, you know, also you're kind of in the public eye when you have a crown and sash on people are, you know, they're going to look at you. And so um, sometimes I would interact with people and they would definitely have different beliefs than me, or maybe expect me to do something that I knew, you know, didn't fit with my standards. Right. Um, but it was really neat because I, I found at the times when I did stand up for my beliefs or, you know, explain how I was feeling about something or my views on something, rather than people getting upset about it, they respected it, um, which was, I don't know, it was just really comforting to me. Um, and maybe someone didn't agree with what I said, but they still respected that I was able to be bold about it and be able to stand up for myself. Um, and there were many times where I would get asked questions and in interviews about topics that I definitely had, you know, strong, not, I would say strong opinions, but I was very firm on those opinions because of the gospel and because of our beliefs and right. having that confidence to stand up for it was sometimes nerve wracking because I didn't want to offend anybody, but also, you know, just, just being firm in my beliefs. And it, I think is a very powerful thing and people can respect that. Yes. I love that. I'm thinking <laughs> about our own, my neighbor, Kelly Kamaoha, who also ran for Miss Hawaii. She came first runner up. And I remember, Lynette, thank you for that question, by the yes. way. Oh, okay, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see who asked yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, Lynette, Lynette asked. Yeah. And oh, I remember God. that, yeah, she she wore a one piece, you know, um, everybody else was not. And I don't know if that, you know, hurt her chances, but she, she did so well and all of us thought she should have won. But, you know, she represented, like you just talked about, you know, her values and, um, represented um you know herself so well as a member of the church yeah. Yeah. Really I, nice. will say, I will add one thing that i always loved is because people you know they always want to know what school you go to or yeah yeah true. So as Ms. they would always ask oh what are you doing for college and i would say BYU Hawaii. and sometimes that would be on a microphone in front of a lot of people and i just always thought it was so cool that i got to say byu hawaii because it was always a conversation starter always yeah. It would be like yeah. either they didn't know there was a school, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <I'll> yeah. <laughs> right? You but it always was a conversation starter, and then it would usually lead to, oh, are you, are you a member of the church, or you know? Yeah. And so it, it always just kind of led to something, and I I thought it was so neat that I was able to, you know, represent and and always shout proud that I was a BYUH student. <laughs> <Exciters>. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's so good, Nikki. I know that does always come up too, and. People hear about the Oyo. Oh, there's a school out there. Yeah, kind of thing. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yeah. there is. Go check it out. There's a ton <laughs> check it <by>. out. <laughs> yes, I know. Really good. So these are some pictures from your um, from Snap. I think were you doing some service here? Um. Yeah. So these are. This is pretty much what sums up what my time as Miss Hawaii was. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize, at least for the Miss America organization, um, you don't get paid. Um, you know, as Miss Hawaii, I, I didn't get paid. So 98% of everything I did was volunteering um, and mm -hmm. was your time and your efforts. 
there was very few events where I actually got paid, but you know, you earn scholarship money, but everything you do during your reign is, is volunteering. And wow. it just, oh, it's just a very <laughs> special a time. time. Yeah, yeah it, is, it is a lot of time. And um, I don't know, it's one of those things where it was a lot of time, but I would not have changed it um, at all. It, it was very busy and, you know, it, it was time consuming, but the experiences that I had and the people that I was able to meet um, are just something that I will always hold very closely in my heart and will always cherish, um, you know, like, I, in that oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I just, and I'm still kind of amazed that you did this while you were a student. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely took balance. I don't know how well I balanced it, but I graduated. Yeah. So it's just kidding. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> But yeah, I just like the the top left, um, and this mm -hmm. kind of goes in with the theme that I chose of seize the day, um, because as Miss Hawaii, one thing that is really unique is you know you're meeting people all the time. You meet so many people in a day, and a lot of these people you will never see again. You know, a lot of the people I I get to spend an hour with you know, a girl and, and get to color with her and do all these fun things. But I probably, after that, I won't really ever see her again, maybe, but it's it's not as likely. And so, you know, first impressions are very important because when you meet someone, that's probably the last impression they'll have of you. Right. And so I always try to remind myself that no matter how busy I was or how hard of a day I was having, because there definitely were hard moments, um, that that could be someone's last impression of me. So what impression impression am I leaving on someone? And um, I just tried really hard to make the most of every, every single interaction that I had um, and just to really cherish those moments um, that I could share with a child or with a veteran. Um, and I, I think that's why I just loved my experience so much is I just tried to soak it all in so much that I think that's why it was so hard for me to to pass it off because it was just a very special, special time for me. I mean, I can just tell that you just took that role so seriously because you wanted to leave a good impression, you know, and giving all of your time and, you know, especially as busy as you were, just um, wonderful. Good job. <laughs> good job representing. Okay. And you have, um, let's see, let's, can I move to the next slide? Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, graduation. You made it. <laughs> I did it. I love this picture of you with your there at the in the front and also with your parents. I yeah, love it. Parents. I know. I was like, I have to get the famous picture in front of the sign. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> I, just, I love the saying so much. Enter to le learn, go forth to serve. I think yes. it's just it's so cool that that's our motto. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I truly feel that like with any experience I have, even with everything I learned in Miss Hawaii, I feel like, you know, we're all blessed with experiences and people in our lives and things that we get to learn. And, you know, the whole point is to share that with others and, and to serve others. And sometimes it's hard to remember that. But and I try to remind myself that, you know, like when I'm learning new things and I'm gaining new skills, the whole point is to move forward and to share and serve that, you know, serve other people. Yes. You're definitely one of those genuine gold people that oh, David McCain vision, Nikki. Thank you yes. That's so much. <laughs> yes. Definitely, I see that already. Okay, so Dad has this cool hat on, has your name on it. <laughs> yes. This is my dad's famous Nikki hat. And he got it um, when I first started competing. And he'll wear it to any, any event or any, you know, monument I guess moment that I have so he wore it at Miss Hawaii at any of my other competitions I competed at my graduation um and it's just it's so sweet every time he wears it he has like there's like other writing on it about you know different things that I've done or something he'll have it in, embroidered on that <laughs> but my parents are definitely um huge supporters and they have taught me so much and you know, even just the hat is just a reminder to me of how, how much my parents are always cheering me on. And I definitely would not be where I am, you know, without their guidance and their help with everything. So, wow. so grateful for them. <laughs> good. I know we didn't really get to talk to them, but I know they're still on and I want to tell them they've done a good job 
raising your <laughs> siblings. <laughs> really good. They're awesome. Okay, so um, by the way, all three of you, right, attended BYU Hawaii. Is that right? Yeah, so my older sister and my older brother and I wanted to follow in their footsteps. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. Really cool. Okay, so after graduation, what happened? So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. how did this come up? That's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So after graduation, um, I graduated in December, and I honestly had no idea what I was going to do after graduation. I was <laughs> a little bit stressed because I had no idea what I was going to do, and I was right. applying to a lot of different jobs and just trying to figure out what would be best for me, but. Um, this was another experience where something kind of, a door just opened and I decided that I, you know, it felt right. I felt like the Lord was telling me that I should take this opportunity. And mm. so I did. And, um, so my official role is, um, host and I'm also a producer for, um, Island Life, which is a new show on KITV4. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been a whirlwind. It's, <laughs> I can't believe I've already been working here for a few months, but. Um, it's really just a really amazing experience. Oh, that's that's such a cool thing. I mean, I've seen a few Miss Hawaii's go into television, you know, um, and that's wonderful to um, that that opportunity came to you too. I mean, this was your mar you were in marketing, right? That was your yeah. agent. So this yeah. kind of yeah. Had you had any television experience besides being in pageants? Um, to be honest, not really. Um, just just some of the things I had done as Miss Hawaii on camera, but I had never worked in news before um, or done really anything in journalism or anything like that. So um, when I was applying, it was something that I didn't quite think I would get just because I had experience in other fields, but um, it just worked out. And it's, it's neat because I actually use a lot of the things I learned in marketing and in business. I use so much every day throughout my job. And so it's kind of neat to see, you know, even if what you're doing technically isn't what you majored in, how you can still use that so much. Okay. Well, tell us uh, the teacher and some of the things you're using today. Have yeah. So the, the cool thing is, um, so I guess the whole point of Island Life is to showcase local businesses, you know, and tell mm -hmm. stories of individuals in the community. And um, it's really neat because in a sense, you're kind of doing marketing for them and you're you're helping tell their story in a way yeah. that people can understand and that they can appreciate. And yeah. um, so when we're going into a shoot and I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what we're going to talk about, I'm kind of using my marketing brain as, okay, what, what do people want to know? Like what, how, you know, what, what would connect with them and make them appreciate this? Um, mm -hmm. And then also yeah. I use my marketing skills with, you know, creating content and, and just making sure that we have all that for our social media and things like that. But definitely the connections and, and all of that that I learned in marketing, I'm able to use at work today. Oh, that's so good. Glad that it's uh, come in handy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now, we have a few more slides, and then you want to show a video that you have too? Sure, yeah, sure. Okay. Here's you on set. Yeah, so this is um, kind of a look of what I do. Um, so as host, there's definitely on camera, on camera work. Um, and then there's the behind the scenes um, where I'm just doing the interviewing. And then there's also the more behind the scenes where I'm doing recording and doing voiceovers um, and all of that. But yeah, it's just, I love it because really it's, even though I'm, I'm on camera, I'm kind of just the person that's helping guide so that those individuals can tell their story. Um, so a lot of times people like they'll say oh your show and i'm like oh it's not my show <laughs> and trust me it's not my show there's so many people that you know are, are putting their time and efforts to tell these people's stories and i'm just kind of being the person to help guide the story and give them the opportunity to do it but it's it's always you know about the business or it's always about the, the individual and all the amazing things that they that they get to do oh that's great are you in a low either yes i am I am. That one was really cool. <laughs> Sometimes I'll find myself in really random places that I wasn't expecting to be in. So my job definitely keeps me on my toes. That I wasn't, I didn't even know I was going to be going inside the Loi that day. But he was like, take off your slippers. You're getting in. I was like, all right, you got it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so cool. That must be really fun, you know, really getting to meet people and, you know, 
help these businesses, you know, and advert, you know, just put them out there on the news and really highlight them. Yeah. What has probably been your most interesting story so far that you've covered? Ooh, okay. Let me think. That's really hard. Um, yeah, there's probably a lot. Have there been some of your favorites, like maybe something fun that you've done and other one, maybe something really interesting? So one one that all, like, sticks out to me that was so, just like fun in general is we did a um, tour um, on the Kaneohe Sandbar. Mm-hmm. And oh, that yeah. one was really cool just because yeah. they create this really fun, family-friendly type of experience. And so we were able to go out on the sandbar and- It's you know, nice out there. Out. It's so beautiful. Um, that one was super fun. Just, you know, being able to do those fun activities and kind of highlight all that they do. I think um, you have a picture for that, don't you? I do, actually. I think I have one in the next. Uh, yeah. Is this the one? That is the one. So if you look, I'm going to shout him out. Cam- Cameron is actually on the back behind yeah. me. He on that one with us and, and got to, to hang out for the day. But nice. super, super fun. Um, and then this one on the right, this one was actually a really neat segment that we did and um, very touching so there's a um a company called heart horses and they do equine therapy and um it was really cool to hear how they really change people's lives through you know doing this type of therapy where people can you know you know groom the horses ride the horses and also just learn um about how horses can connect with people and i was really grateful that I was able to experience that and just see the amazing work um, that that they're doing to just turn people's lives around and help them, you know, feel happiness and build their confidence. And so it's just, I just love being able to see how people are making an impact in the community and, and really just, um, you know, making a difference in their in individual fields and the different things that they're passionate in. Oh, I love that. I've seen I've seen people do yoga with goats and other, all kinds of stuff, right? <laughs> I've actually done that before, not through this, but if you have, I highly recommend it. it. Is the funnest experience ever. <laughs> That's so really cool. cool. <laughs> really cool. Okay, you have a few more slides here. Yes. Okay. So, I definitely, you know, with my job, we get to do a lot of fun things like the the boat tour and, and all those things. But this is probably my favorite part of my job. And that is getting to talk to people. <laughs> Not just because I like to talk, you know, and talk to people, but I love meeting new people. And um, I just, I'm learning new things every day. And, you know, just meeting people that have such inspiring stories, kind of what I was mentioning before, but, and just seeing, you know, what people are passionate about and, that just makes me so happy. You know, when I see someone that's passionate about what they do, um, whether that is a business or a cause that they're involved with and how they're really trying to benefit the people around them and make it the best for anybody that's involved. And I think that's so neat that we're able to tell those stories and I'm able to talk to them and, and be able to share that with other people so that they can, they might benefit from it too, just by watching the segment or something. So this is probably my favorite part of the job and, and just really, really being able to just see how many amazing individuals there are in this world. And um, yeah, I love it. It's one of my favorite parts. You used to talk to all these people, right? Right. (laughs) I know I'm like, oh, we get to talk today. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And you you get to bring them to us. You know, we get to see that on TV and really get to um, learn more about all these amazing people and their passions, right? And their, their businesses, everything they're doing to help the community. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, I, I just have a question. I'm kind of curious. How did you guys eat lunch with your masks on? <laughs> <laughs> I know. So that's been, that was a tricky thing, especially when the masks were more strict. So we did the conversation with the mask, and then when it was time yeah. to eat, we took it off. Yeah, okay. You did eat. Okay, great. <laughs> I, did, I definitely ate probably too much that day, but I did eat. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Are we got to show this glass clip. Nikki, is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll show this last clip about your Island Life um, TV series, so exciting. And welcome to Island Life. I'm Nikki Kehalani Holbrook, and I'll be your guide on this journey as we discover hidden gems, new adventures, and all that makes Hawaii so special. 
Exploring the world is my passion. Whether it's a great local restaurant or traveling beyond borders, possibilities are endless in paradise, and I can't wait to explore with you. Join me and experience Island Life. Watch Island Life on KITV4 and KIKU. I love it. It looks so fun. <laughs> It's awesome. You guys should check it out. <laughs> oh, so is that on every night or is that like every week? Yeah, it's it's on almost every day um, on KITV and also Kiku. And um, they'll play it in the mornings. Um, they're actually doing an evening during the evenings and also, um, yeah, evenings and then a nighttime one too. So they'll kind of play like in between the newscast or after. And so you can find it there or on our social media pages. So, Oh, that's cool. So just go to KITV and type in island life and that should bring it up yeah yeah and, okay. and we have it on youtube and instagram so if you just type up island life hi for hawaii you, you'll be able to find all the segments on there <laughs> oh i love it i'm gonna go watch it i, I just watched a few of them but <laughs> auntie jane um helped uh, me find that earlier oh, i want to give a shout out to her jane ho ching thank you for helping us with Offer. today's podcast and she was thank kind you. of my liaison with you but <laughs> As we come to the end of your um, of of today's podcast, I just want to thank you, Nikki, for um, um, helping us today and being a, a guest today. I know you had such a busy schedule, um, especially <laughs> the last few weeks, right? It's been kind of crazy. Yeah, I think it has been a little crazy. <laughs> I know. I, I I'm so grateful that you made time for us and we got to hear your story. It's very inspiring, and you know, it's telling me. Gee, if you can do all those things, being a student, Miss Hawaii, and all these things, starting a new uh, TV show, <laughs> we can't, we shouldn't complain too much. No, <laughs> we're, we're, we're all busy. <laughs> it's all busy, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And um, before we close up today, I'd like to give you a few minutes to, to just kind of sum up or whatever you'd like to share on your mind about <clears throat> your journey, your experience, and whatever you'd like to share with us and our youth and our, our guests today. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to, you know, share some of my experiences. Um, I, I really feel like for anybody and, and for myself, you know, everything that I've experienced or um, been able to do it, no matter how hard I worked or time that I put in it, it definitely was because of the people that were around me and, um, and so I can't take credit for, you know, different accomplishments or things that I'm doing now, you know, just on my own. It was, it's definitely from the people I've been able to interact with and, and work with and learn from. Um, the experiences I've had at BYU Hawaii, I feel like everything kind of has just come together to kind of help guide me to where I am and where I'll continue to go. And so I think just kind of taking... And I have to remind myself this to just, you know, seize the day and, and take those opportunities, interact with the people around you, meet new people, um, because you never know how that will shape you into who you'll become and, you know, what opportunities those could open. So I'm just, yeah, so, so grateful for everyone that's, you know, been an impactful person in my life and helped guide me and continue to guide me to, you know, what I have to learn and what I have to do. Well, you have definitely done some amazing things. In just a short amount of time of your life, you know, there's more to come. I know, and it's exciting. It's exciting. You and Cameron getting married in a few months, and you know this new TV show. And um, <clears throat> we're we're so excited and look forward to all the things that you're going to be doing, Nikki. Thank you. Thank you for representing our <laughs> Hawaii Ohana. Thank you for um, representing Hawaii so well as well. And it's uh, wonder we're very uh, grateful to have you <clears throat> as a part of our BYU Hawaii Ohana. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take a, a few comments here. I see one here from our own Eddie Mayava. He couldn't be here today, but he wanted to thank you, Nikki, for your time and sharing your journey with our alumni and students. And oh, thank you. The best. <laughs> yes. And uh, we had a, someone watching from the Philippines. So Thank cool. you, Roxanne, for joining us. I'm we had so Jan cool. from upstairs, President's office. <laughs> Mahalo. And um, Valerie. Thank you for joining Valerie from Utah. Good to see you again. Um, so we'll kind of wrap things up. And thanks again, Nikki, for being here. 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, you hang on, okay, at the end? All right, we want to see you one more time. Thank you. Well, everybody, thank you for joining us today for our Aloha Friday podcast with Nikki Holbrook. It's been a pleasure getting to know her along with the rest of you a little bit better and also to hear a little bit about her journey and how many people here have influenced her life as many of us, you know, our families and mentors, um, teachers, everyone that has um, helped to shape each of our lives. And um, <clears throat> it's so important to have a mentor and uh, it starts, yeah, we can each be a mentor to those around us. And I appreciate the work that Nikki's doing in the community in serving and uh, continuing to serve here, even in Hawaii. So thanks again, Nikki. Uh, we'll close off today's podcast and just a quick reminder about some of the things coming up. We'd like to have you um, join us on Monday at 3 p.m. with our student host, Cynthia from Malaysia. She'll be introducing uh, Lani Pinpin and talking to her about her job with Microsoft. We're excited to hear from Lani and grateful for her and um, helping to mentor our students. Next Friday, we've invited uh, Vice President Kala Kao of Student Life. He is um, he and his wife will be joining us on our Aloha Friday podcast on June 17th at 3 p.m. And finally, all of you alumni from Hawaii, join us for our Alumni Hawaii Chapter Reunion on November 4th through the 6th. We are planning it around Food Fest, which is a great time to be here on campus. And we hope that you'll be here. We have a lot of fun things in store for you. And we'll soon have a place for you to register for this, okay? So thanks again for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again soon and um, grateful, for your, grateful for your support of BYU Hawaii. Take care and aloha. <laughs>